So hello and welcome to uh, Film Mixologist, the place on the internet thingy uh, where we run a kind of engine fire prevention program. And case in point, this unit that we have here is a Holy 390. Um, <coughs> customer sent it in, and customer states that it was just overflowing fuel all over the manifold. Now it doesn't take a genius to work out that that's not good. <laughs> Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a quick autopsy of this unit but specifically bearing in mind this issue about the fueling obviously I'm going to rebuild the carb completely but let's do the, the the initial disassembly to try and see what's wrong if I can spot kind of what's wrong with the fueling because that is going to give me the strategy to fix the unit and make sure it doesn't happen again. Okay, so I've done an, an, an initial disassembly and I'm going slow because obviously I want to make sure that I that I don't miss anything and so far what I've found is that the fuel level was actually set too low. If you look at both fuel bowls they should be like more parallel so this in a normal application would tell me that the fuel level is a bit low so clearly there's something going on there with the needles and, and seats or something and I also found some evidence of contamination in the fuel so if you look here hopefully you can see it there this and this as well this isn't very good so clearly there is something going on in the fuel system and also look at this if you look here this puddle of fuel obviously I've, I've, I've taken it apart quite carefully but this puddle of fuel is really it smells a bit kind of like varnishy so obviously there is something going on there with the fuel system and also if you look here the transfer slots are exposed that's never a good sign so so they were trying to 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 get the engine to get more air that's not good probably might be a power valve that is blown or is the power valve that was a bit dodgy which is consistent with this fuel contamination issue so now the second step is to take off the needle seat assemblies very very carefully so that I can I can check uh, kind of if if they were functioning correctly or not. Problem found. So if you look at this needle and seat assembly, obviously you can see that the O-ring is in a pretty bad shape. Look, you can you can poke it and it's and it's not very pliable. So clearly this was an issue. But <laughs> look at this, this thing, this O-ring just disintegrated. When I was when I was trying to take it apart, so obviously the fuel would have just been seeping in, regardless of the level of this. So I think that's that's the diagnosis I'm looking for. It was the dodgy needle and seat assemblies that actually weren't controlling the fuel level at all. Um, so now I'm going to start just taking the whole thing apart just to start cleaning it. So I've got updates here and I found that there is a, a little bit of a problem uh, with the casting uh, in this carb and I'll show you a bit kind of closer closer up what I mean by it okay so as you can see here I'm trying to put the camera as close as I can there is like a ridge here and here look so all of this will need to be kind of completely flattened out because the cup isn't going to work like this and also try to run a straight edge through here and it's not that great I don't know if you can see in the camera or not but it's not very straight same thing with this side so I try to run the straight edge like so and things are not looking that great so it has a high spot here and here kind of along, along all of this side so uh, this isn't very good so what I need to do now is I need to deploy my carb straightener 9000 which I'll show you in a minute what that is
Okay, so here's the the first face of the car, as you can see. Well, we probably can't see, but there are no no ridges anymore. We got a straight surface, which is what we want. Same thing with the other side. Actually, this this is looking a bit better, but it's the same thing. It's a straight surface, which is what we want uh, for this sort of unit. So now, what I need to do is I need to carry on with the build process. Okay, so as you can see now, uh, through the magic of YouTube's. I've got this unit uh, pretty much uh, assembled, so the base, body, uh, the, uh, the the choke, fully operational. And now, but what, I, what I want to do now is, remember the beginning of the video, I said that the, the problem that this unit had was that uh, it was leaking fuel, it was a fire hazard. So, how do we check if we have resolved the problem? So obviously I put a new, brand new needle and seat assembly, you, you would have thought. So the way I do that is by using a vacuum pump. That's how I test kind of whether repair has been successful or not. So basically, I put this thing here. I try to generate a vacuum. There you go. And as you can see, it, the needle stays there. So that tells me that this fuel bowl is actually fine. Um, and that's how I test them. So I send them out and I know that they are, they're all good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish building up the unit and just kind of button up all the other details that are required. Okay, and here we come to the end of the of the end of this project. Look at this. This unit is in now perfect shape, perfect condition. All oh, everything turns, closes as it should. Fuel bowls are now working as they intended, and we tested that. So this unit should be good enough for to you know be installed in the car now one thing i do have to apologize that the uh, that, that the contact has been a bit heavy holly heavy of late and and it's not because i planned it that way it's just that this is a this is a shop and therefore i have to respond to customer demands and at the moment i'm i'm inundated with requests to do this sort of car this was a customer car so therefore, I, and they customers expect their unit, they send it to me because their car doesn't run and they want the car to run. So therefore, I can't tell them, oh, no, you have to wait five weeks for me to uh, slot it in with the content. So I have to respond to it when it comes. So therefore, that's why the content has been a little bit wholly heavy of late because most of my projects that I've got on at the time are wholly based cars. So I hope you enjoyed it. You got something out of it and thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next episode